Hello fellow sim racers, Assetto Corsa fans, and unsuspecting victims of YouTube's cantankerous search algorithm. As you may have already gathered, it's Porsche O'Clock here, as I take the 911 Cup car for a quick race around Brands Hatch whilst I'm witter on about racing stuff. So I'm going to try and do something a little bit different in the video today. Rather than just doing a straight race commentary like I'd normally do, I'm going to try and intersperse it with a bit of uh, talk about what's been going on in the sim racing world and the wider motorsport world that's caught my interest over the last couple of weeks. Uh, with respect to the race itself, I am trying to string together a series of these Porsche Cup races so I can actually learn the car in, in a bit more depth. I tend to flit around like a bit of a butterfly um, in... in racing games trying different cars and tracks all the time which means I get a great overview of everything but never really feel like I master a car so this is a, uh, a good excuse for me so a gap opening up between those two Porsches there and it's uh, not very inviting because inevitably the 914 car will move over and pinch me but we get a decent run out of Surtees and he's uh, more than dealt with as usual, take things pretty gently on the first lap. As to the AI, thankfully. Let's get a much better run through the second part of the corner there than the 919 car. 919 had a great number for a Porsche. As is 924 in front of us, in fact. In general, I find that the AI is pretty pretty tame on the first lap in most racing games. I think when they get all get into a uh, string pretty close to each other, it brings down the lap time uh, a little bit. brings down the lap time. It slows down the lap time, I should say, which means that uh, first lap can be pretty easy pickings. But at the same time, uh, the AI can be a touch unpredictable as the uh, 94 car moves across uh, to try and take the apex without realising we're there. We understeer slightly and the whole thing's a bit of a mess, but we get the job done into Druids. Anyway, to talk about some of the uh, sort of other things I wanted to talk about today, I mean, there's only so much you can talk about Porsches. Um, particularly of interest to me this week has been the Project Cars 2 patch. Now, it's a massive, massive patch that's come out this week that's... Uh, <laughs> one of the little abusive things you can do to an AI, you put the nose up the inside and they tend to get out of the way. You try that on an online race and that's uh, game over but for both of you. Uh, back to the Project Cars 2 patch. Um, massive, massive, massive update. Lots of uh, changes to things like VR, which in particular for me has been very important. I haven't been able to play Project Cars 2 since uh, just after Christmas as uh, VR broken it and as you may be able to tell from this video, I, I love me some uh, some headset action as we uh, use our superior perspectival 3D uh, vision device to punt the uh, unsuspecting 911 in front of us. Isn't timing wonderful? Anyway, yeah, back to the patch. Uh, finally works for me in VR again. Uh, the menus in particular are actually working properly. Uh, something that's... Uh, work to start with um, and I, I think a patch subsequently broke everything so yeah over the last couple of months I've played no Project Cars 2 uh, so it's nice to be able to have it back I managed to get a few hours in over the last couple of days and a lot of my problems with it have seemed to have been solved however uh, my, my core issues with the game in, uh, sort of generally come down to the physics and handling of some of the cars uh, still make it a little bit frustrating for me. There are there's certain cars, particularly the faster cars, the uh, all the sexy ones, particularly things like the Group C cars, for example, are just so easy to drive. Uh, and I don't mean that as a good thing. I don't mean that they have very predictable handling. Uh, I just mean that they're easy. And I, you know, I, I've spent a lot of time watching onboard footage of things like you know. Uh, there's a great video of uh, Stefan Beloff in a 962 at Spa in, uh, I think, 86, for example, and he's fighting that car every step of the way. But you get into Project Cars 2, and it's it really grips. All the Group C cars do. I uh, did a bit of a race uh, in the uh, the Jaguar, the XJR9 at Laguna Seca, and it's just it's so planted. It's, you know, on a bumpy track like Laguna Seca as well, you know. 
you you want it to be a, a terrifying experience but it's just it's just not maybe that's my expectations that are wrong and not the game and you know i don't want to be negative about it i think project cars 2 has loads going for it uh night to day transitions are great the weather's great uh weather's really good uh, it looks beautiful uh, certainly in a way that Assetto Corsa and <laughs> iRacing just don't. So, you know, uh, I, I, I'm not hating on it. I, I just really... I, I, I'm disappointed that some of the cars are so easy to drive. Uh, but anyway, moving on from that sort of vaguely controversial subject to something even more controversial, which is the, uh, the Williams F1 launch this week. I'm going to try and not dwell too much on the really controversial bit and uh, well maybe talk about the livery. I know people have been ragging on the uh, area of black they've inserted on the bottom part of the car that kind of follows the shape of the underside of the side pods and the halo. Uh, and I, I know it's a bit of an acquired taste for some but uh, as a guy with some design background myself I you know I think it looks it looks really good. I think it makes the car look a bit a bit lighter more purposeful as uh, we do a good job of completely overdriving the 911 there. Should have had this in a martini livery, really, shouldn't I? I can't bring up the subject, however, without talking about Halo. I don't think there are too many people that are fans of it aesthetically. I can understand the the need for it, uh, and I you know I, I understand why the FIA's uh, mandated it. I just think it looks really, really bad. I don't think there's any more to say than that on the subject, really. Obviously, the uh, IndyCar guys tested their screen this week as well, uh, which doesn't just look better than the Halo, in my opinion. I just I think it looks great. It looks genuinely great. Obviously, uh, there have been plenty of indie cars in the past that have had screens, maybe not quite as big as that, but uh, so there's some sort of precedent for it. But I think there is in Formula One as well. You know, you look at some of the cars from the 80s, they had reasonably sized windscreens, obviously not quite to the same extent. So I don't think such a concept falls down on uh, the tradition argument in the way that the Halo definitely does, or, you know, some people are very opposed to the idea, oh, this is a bad idea. So we uh, back out early, get a little bit of a twitch of understeer and uh, live to fight another day. However, the AR will likely be very slow. And sort of delivers on its promise, but I'm not sure we've really got the pace to uh, pop one up the inside down into Dingledale and... Oh, we do. It all sounds very calm when you're commentating on it after the fact, but at the time I was probably shitting myself. So yes, back to the um, the aero screen thing. Yeah, I think Formula One's got a precedent for it, and assuming it meets the safety requirements necessary, I know that uh, IndyCar guys haven't really done the same level of testing just yet. But if it does, I think I think most people are in agreement that it's it's a better solution. Anyway, we're on to the final lap here. I've been wittering on for uh, several laps now about some of the things that have gone on in the motorsport and sim racing world this week. I guess there's only so much you can say about uh, Porsches, <laughs> so uh, perhaps that's a blessing. Do really enjoy driving this car around Brands Hatch. It's a car I haven't really driven much until I decided to do this video. Did uh, did a quick practice session to get my eye in, and then just jumped straight into the race. We were only able to run the uh, uh, I think 96 or 97 percent. Haven't quite got the pace just yet to uh, feel like I can run them at full. But uh, again, hopefully something we can build up through the series of videos. We are... Oh, oh, that's some, uh, one of the weird AI quirks there. When it does go through... Um, it's that Westfield, isn't it? Uh, oh, a bit on the slow side. It, uh, the AI chooses to jink to the right for some reason. Oh, that is uh, adventurous and it's never going to work. Uh, the line round the outside of Sterling Moss Bend is just so fast that you can never really make that work in my experience. Although we do get a great run out of clearways towards the finish line. This is going to be a complete dash towards hopefully a photo finish, but no, we haven't quite got the legs under us. And there we go, fifth place. Not so bad. 
Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed today's video. It's been a bit of an experiment for me, having a uh, witter on about some uh, motorsport and sim racing topics, rather than just commenting on all of the various 911s around us. Anyway, if you have enjoyed uh, the video, please consider hitting like and giving us a subscribe. And until next time, thank you for watching and goodbye.